Hello everyone and welcome back to Rewind the Year 2013 series. Today is episode 3, all about secret love. So, Secret Love is a K-drama. It was actually my very first Jisung drama ever. This is where I discovered him. And then after this one, I just became one of his biggest fans. Like, I love how versatile he is as an art actor. And going back to this one, especially with the year... The past two, three years has just been amazing in terms of drama. I mean, The Devil Judge, um, Adamus, which was my latest favorite da- drama of his, one of my favorites from last year. And going back to this very first drama of his that I've ever watched was a bit sentimental for me. It's like a complete 360 moment. Also, I just forgot how much this drama made me cry because I cried so much re- watching this because of stupidity because of how evil people can be and uh, the writers they did not spare <laughs> the the female lead at all so secret love is the story of Minyuk and Yu Jong. Minyuk it was born into a wealthy family and it has everything including good looks, intelligence, but is not someone that is very, very kind. And due to an an unfortunate accident, he loses his girlfriend and their unborn child in a hit and run. Now, Yu Jung, who is the girlfriend of the person that actually committed the hit and run, goes to prison for him. And from there, their um, relationship goes from a place of hate to something else. And the person that she actually goes to jail with later on betrays her. So the story is so insane. You know, I remember when I watched it the first time, I was like, oh my God, who's evil mind (laughs) came up with a story like this because there should be a limit to suffering. Now, this is going to be split into two parts. The first part is going to be the things that I loved and the second part is going to be issues that I had with the plot. Now, when it comes to the things that I love, this is definitely still a classic in my eyes. You know, um, the writing is really good, which I really enjoy. You know, the acting is amazing. They could do better with the kissing, but you know, the romance is there. But the kissing is not even necessary. You know, you feel everything else, so it's fine because those kisses, (laughs) those are so 2013 kisses. They cannot survive this era of K-drama watches. Oh, my God, they will be eaten alive for days. So um, I love the acting. I love the chemistry between the lead and I also enjoy the pace of their relationship, you know, because they start from a place of hate, real hate, you know, um, in Minyuk's mind, this is the woman that took everything from him, you know, his girlfriend, his unborn child, he just wants to see her suffer, you know, and um, it's not like immediately They go from hating each other to being in love. No, 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 no. There's none of that Insta love thing here. You know, even though they have prayer encounters between the two of them, but the relationship really takes some work. You know, you go from they hate each other uh, to somewhat of um, curiosity because now he doesn't even know why he goes back to her 
again and again even though it goes back at first just to hurt her because at some point in time she became the reason why he continued on living because once he loses his uh, girlfriend he kind of breaks down and try to take his life and you know he's lost for a while and now his sole reason for being alive is just I want to take revenge. I want to take revenge. And she became the center of his world. And he was so aware of everything that she was doing. And even her going to jail did not stop this man from trying to hurt her. And the relationship goes from there to curiosity. Curiosity and starts like understanding and then like worry, friendship, love you know and happy ending that's where we are well well so it's such a nicely written relationship who just grows slowly but surely through the episode and i love the pace and i love how um well i'm not going to say realistic because personally i don't see how if you hate someone well it does discover later on that she's innocent so maybe there's a scenario where this can happen in life but he is not a saint either. So I I won't say it realistic, but I love just how the relationship took its time to become one of, you know, um romantic more more one of romantic nature going from wherever they were coming from, which I really love that. You know, um, like I said, I love the story. And this was such a nice show because even though this is a show that I've seen before, every time I was done with an episode, I still felt that urge to go on and watch the next one. So it just keeps you coming, you know, and I really, really like that. Now, when it comes to the issues that I have with the show, I'm going to have two type of issues one are going to be issues that are related to the show overall i mean something in the plot the the the, the story and everything and another part is going to be the characters and what they have done so this has nothing to do with the writers or anybody it's just the fictional people are the ones i'm upset with so first this show is full of tropes that I no longer stand. You know, first, you have the third act breakup. Can we please stop doing that? Why do people need to break up so close to the end? It always happens like around episode, especially in 16 episode, you know, dramas. It happens around episode 12, 13. Things start to get rocky, you know, and we suffer for the past two episodes and then everything get become better again by the last episode by the last episode but i just cannot do that especially because it is done through a misunderstanding which is something else that i cannot stand anymore like communication stop i cannot understand it sometimes it's even ridiculous because it will be people that have been communicating quite well and all of a sudden they don't know how to speak to each other anymore how so you know <laughs> it's just this is something that I did not like. The male lead bullying the female lead. I don't care what reason was behind. As soon as she went to jail, that should have been it for him. Like there was no need to keep just being behind this woman and trying to hurt her. Because honestly, I still to this day wonder why she fell in love with him he made her life a living hell and the thing is you know it's that old medley thing where whatever the medley does there's never really real con consequences to his action and you know as soon as the characters fall in love everything is good under the sun we forget about everything else that you did to me before how 
how is that even possible so this is something that annoys the life out of me it's like the male lead is given free reign to be as terrible of a human being as possible just because this is the person that is end game and you know this is something that why this is one of the reasons why i wish that we can move more towards you know not knowing who is going to be end game because since it's like this is the person they could be bad they could do so many things to the female lead but because this is the end game this is the person that you're supposed to end up with somehow some way they'll find their way together again i ah, know no I know. I just, even though I love the pace of the relationship and how um, it evolves, I'm still not agreeing with it on the grounds of it was really terrible to her. And I don't see how she falls for him. Yes, he's caring. Yes, but what happens to what he did before? Like, at least if there was some sort of, you know, apology, a real one, not one that is done just in passing. Apologies from his previous actions. But no, you know, this is the male lead. This is who she's supposed to end up with. So he has just... Free reign, permission to treat her as bad as he wants to. You know, um, Sion and her not letting go. Ah, uh, this is something I've been complaining about for a while. And it's like if somebody has clearly expressed the fact that there is no interest in you whatsoever, why do we need men and women that just hang up still they they just be here they don't want to let it go they self find ways to hurt the couple when they are going to they are striving for something that is going to make them unhappy at the end of the day because this person has clearly told you i am not interested in you and all those uh, let's get engaged let's do all this you are not even happy so what are you fighting for like, I just wish you would do away from that. It's like, I hate to see just women and men portrayed as those desperate people that cannot find somebody else. Just stay alone then. But don't be that person that just holds back everyone because you want to have your way. So this is something else that I had an issue with. Now, the last part is much more of a character thing. It has nothing to do with the writers, but it's just the character. And that is her ex-boyfriend, a.k.a. the devil incarnate, Doyon. This man is the devil. Like... I wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt because somehow... In my brain, I forgot about all of his bad actions. So when the show started and they get into the accident and after, during the aftermath, it's really pushing her to come out with the truth, you know, say that you were not the one driving. And I was hoping that please let this man really come through, even though this was a show that I've watched before. And I knew that, no, this man was just going to go left and straight start doing weird things to her but how can you be so evil this woman has sacrificed everything for you a life of freedom she started working because she wanted to, to support you through law school but no you you find nothing better to do than to betray her okay let's say that he was scared to lose his license she went to jail and even when she goes to jail, they're still somewhat on good terms because, you know, it seems like both of them are happy to a certain extent with the decision. She's going to pay. What, what? Okay, cool. But why do you need to hurt your child? Like, how evil do you need to be for you to go to the extent of you? You already have just taking everything away from this woman. She has sacrificed everything for you. Now she's in jail. The only ray of sunshine she has is this child. But you, 
you still find a way to hurt your own child because you want to stop this woman from coming out. Like, how evil can you be knowing that you are responsible for the situation and she sacrificed everything for you? Like, how can you be so bad? How can somebody be so evil? And with me rewatching it, I'm still just so surprised by the extent of this evilness that can be found in some human. And also, when it comes to Yu Jung, she was just stupid. I'm sorry. But at what point do you say enough is enough? Because it was only after he killed her dad that she started to wake up and smell the coffee. Him letting you go to jail was not enough. You know? No. Him acting like, you know, a completely different person once you came out of jail. And you, you can even, you could tell from the very beginning of the show that she was the one that was more invested in the relationship when it comes to um to them because even when he proposed, it was more so a thing of, you know, that's something that she expect of me. So if, since I still need her services, let me just propose. And even when she says, I love you, he actually never say I love you back they just get in the accident after that so what was keeping her there like I don't see any action of his that was just a, a base for her to be so devoted into this relationship because from the very moment the show starts you just see how selfish he is you know and he only thinks about himself so why why would you just sacrifice everything for this horrible man? I know. <laughs> like, she just infuriated me with that. So, um, that was my rewatch experience of A Secret Love. Now, when it comes to the new ranking, originally, when I watched the show in 2013, I gave it a 9 out of 10, and now it was impossible for the show to be a 9 out of 10. There was just so many issues with it, and so many things that I do not enjoy anymore. So, I will give it a 7.5 out of 10, which will make my new ranking like so. Number one will be Love Destiny. Number two, Good Doctor. Number three, Secret Love. The next show I'm going to rewatch was my number four for 2013, Love is Not for Sale. So I don't know what is going to happen there and what is going to surprise me, but I'm su super excited to continue on with uh, the series. It's just so much fun rewatching shows that you've seen before with brand new eyes and how different situations in shows affect you differently now with like a more mature mind. Let me know in the comments if you watched the show before, what did you think about it, you know, and Let's just discuss in the comment. That's it for me today. If you want more, check out the dedicated playlist for the specific series. Also, I have Drama Town, which shows all of the different series that I am reviewing and that I've reviewed before. I have one playlist for the series that I have completed. So I have a lot of things on the channel. If you're interested, just check that out. That's it for me today. I'll talk to you really soon.